Oh, good. You made it. We don't have long agents, so I'm going to be brief. I need to talk to you about Nerd Bourbon Book Club. It's a book discussion show that happens at least once a month on the Nerd Bourbon Network of Podcasts. Your mission is to find out what book they're reading and listen in on their discussion about it. And your mission begins immediately. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. All right. <laughs> Todd, it's 19 years later. We're diving right back into the Harry Potter universe. We're picking up where we left off. How do you feel about it? Well, just overall the Harry Potter universe? <laughs> no, just just you know, just coming into Cursed Child. How were you excited to read this? How did you feel about this coming in? Uh, here's the deal. I knew from you and a reading online that the Cursed Child was kind of eh? yeah for the most part. So, yeah, I was I kind of went into it with low expectations. So, <laughs> so let me let me make myself absolutely clear and I've said this before on the main show. So, but let me just I, I want everybody to know it before they listen to this episode of Book Club. I'm a massive Harry Potter fan. Massive, massive, massive fan. I uh I've been there since the very beginning, since the very first book, you know, like I I love Harry Potter. I fucking love it. It's one of my favorite things about this life. Um I, I respect that. I'm more of the casual fan. Yeah, like I think you've seen all the movies and stuff, but I don't think you've read all I've the books. I've seen all the movies and read a couple of the books. Mhm. So. I uh I love Harry Potter, man. It's just one of those things. Like I that's one of those universes where it's like if I could just if I could give up everything in this fucking mortal life <laughs> and just live in the Harry Potter universe, I probably would. <laughs> I just I love I love it. I love Harry Potter. Like I love the vibes of it. It's actually I'm about to start my uh, my yearly tradition of around Christmas time. I like to rewatch all of the movies. Oh, um, do you? Yeah, I I usually do it once a year around Christmas time. I like to just rewatch the entire series. I, I um, respect that, man. I think the, I actually own all of them. I there actually is a really uh, there's a good Blu-ray collection that you can find on Amazon generally pretty cheap, which is like the complete eight film collection, and um. It's it's it as far as Blu-ray sets go, it's just okay. But like, it's generally pretty cheap. You can usually find it in like the thirty or forty dollar range, and it's every Harry Potter film on Blu-ray. Um, but that's besides the point. So, coming into Cursed Child, I was understandably, you know, somewhat apprehensive, but but mostly excited to dive back into this universe. And you know, just just generally speaking, to sort of spearhead into this whole book club conversation about it this this book does some things right a lot of things wrong (laughs) um there are parts that are great there are parts that feel like bad fan fiction um (laughs) full disclosure you know like i neither todd or i if you couldn't tell by our uh by our wonderful accents neither todd nor i live in london so it's not as if we've gone to see harry potter and the cursed child um you know, uh, the, the actual play. Um, so we've both just read the book, but like it, and, and I hear it works a lot better on the stage and I, it sounds like it's an amazing production and I'm sure it's great, but like there's some shit in this book that just leaves me feeling so cold as a Harry Potter fan. And I'm just like mad that it's canonical, you know? And, (laughs) and like, I'll get into that a little bit later. I would rather focus on to start at least, I'd rather focus on the things this book does right. So what what did you like about this book? I actually kind of liked um, the overall relationship between Harry and... Uh, holy shit. What the fuck's his goddamn name? Albus? Albus? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> oh, you, you, you forget... How did you forget Albus Severus know, Potter? Dude. Oh, I honestly don't know. You're named after two of the bravest... I, I saw this meme recently where it's like... You're named uh, Albus Severus Potter. You're named after two of the bravest men I ever met, blah, blah, blah. And then it was it, Ron's like, I literally sacrificed myself to a chess game when I was 11 for you, you fucking bitch. <laughs> 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 Brave my ass. No, but yeah, yeah. I actually over, I like the overall relationship between them and how it, en- how it ends. Right. But, uh, the, yeah. the interesting thing about Harry Potter and the Cursed Child is... Um, 
it's it does it does the thing where like the cursed child sort of the the title's namesake could refer to a lot of different things yeah um it's interesting because this book is ultimately about fathers and about living in in the shadow of your father and mm-hmm. um th- one of the things that i really like but basically this book has a really interesting structure where Essentially, up until they start dealing with the time travel shit, I really like it. Like, the, the first, like, half of the book, I actually really enjoy. Mm-hmm. Hermione, let, let's, to sort of recap where we're at, it's 19 years later, blah, blah, blah. Um, Hermione and Ron, obviously together, have a, have a Rose, I think is her name, the daughter together. Yeah. And, uh, and she is the uh, the head of the Ministry of Magic and stuff like that. You know, Harry and uh, Ginny Weasley are together and they have, you know, they have kids and stuff. And those kids are now going to Hogwarts for the first time. So Albus is kind of the main character. And we're also following Draco Malfoy's son, Scorpio. Or Scorpius. Uh, Scorpio, I got Xbox on the brain. Uh, <laughs> Scorpius Malfoy. Um, and it's sort of interesting because, like, for, for a couple of reasons. Because the, the, the book sort of makes Albus the anti Harry Potter in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Like, like he's sort of the, uh, just, you know, Harry Potter's famous, but, but now he's, he's in his forties now and he's just kind of working at the ministry of magic and Harry kind of had his story, you know? And I, one thing that I really love about this book is the second Albus gets to Hogwarts, he's already over it. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. like for, for a change, we we've we've we're so used to seeing the world through Harry's eyes uh, over the course of Harry's sort of epic story that like Hogwarts seems like this magical mystical place that you know has all this cool shit happening in it and to Albus it's just school you know yeah and the book sort of just unceremoniously goes through his time at Hogwarts and it nothing interesting happens there he gets sorted into Slytherin and stuff like that and it's it's not like uh it's not like he has his whole grand adventure in Hogwarts, you know. There there's there, there's some shit that goes on in the overall story and again eventually they go back in time and stuff. But um but yeah. Uh, I I feel like I'm I feel like I'm overtaking the conversation. Oh, you keep on going. You you got a lot to say. <laughs> I do. I just as a Harry Potter fan, you know, but I I like that. I like that vibe. I I like the uh I, I like the sort of like melancholy that's associated with with Albus's introduction to uh, to Hogwarts, um, and I, I like sort of seeing seeing his interaction with Harry. And I think there's even a moment where uh, where Harry and Albus have this kind of like, "I wish you weren't my dad. I wish you weren't my son." Yeah, there's that uh, that cliche moment. It's like sometimes I wish you weren't my son as well, or some shit. Yeah, right, and. Uh, we we uh so that that's sort of the crux of this story where the story makes a turn right where mm-hmm. um where he fucking you know they they meet the character of Amos Diggory which is uh, Cedric Diggory's father he thought that so so the the whole crux is that Albus is going to go back in time using the time turner that Hermione just leaves this is this is where we start to get into the weird shit we start to get into the weird issues that I have with the Cursed Child because there, in no way, in this fucking universe, Todd, would Hermione leave the Time Turner so that these kids could access it. No way. I mean, it was kind of it was kind of uh, hidden in a weird way. Yeah, wasn't it? she yeah she had like so, there was a security sort of measure to it, but Hermione is smarter and can and can make more complicated spells. That can get these kids to not get the fucking time turner, yeah, and and keep it. By the way, because if I if I'm not mistaken, doesn't Scorpius like lie and like keep the time turner? Yeah, like, he ends up like keeping it and still fucking with the time. They, they, when they, again, the moment like you said, the moment he gets to the time turner shit, it's just like what the fuck's going on. It becomes know? a very typical time travel story where it's like, oh, you went back in time to fix something, but it fucked everything up, and. uh that's that's you know that's a tale as old as time because they end up going the the idea is that you know Amos Diggory's like you fucking he blames Harry for like the death of his son still all these years later and blah 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 and uh, Amos has this niece uh, this niece called uh, was it Delphi or Delphi or whatever 
um, who, who becomes kind of a major player. And, uh, and he's like, you fucking killed my son, you piece of shit. And Albus is like, I'm going to go back in time and make sure that Cedric lives. Right. And, uh, so they go back to the Triwizard tournament and, uh, I think they actually do it early on, right? Where like he uh... yeah, they 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 keep on like they do it earlier on, and it gets to the point where like each time they basically humiliate him or some shit. Yeah, and then it's yeah, just... I think they they end up humiliating him like they they fuck up his like dragon challenge or whatever, and yeah, and he goes full dark side, he becomes a Death Eater basically, yeah, <laughs> ends up becoming a Death Eater and stuff like that, and and that so here's another thing, Cedric Diggory, oh, I'm about to get heated, Todd. Uh, go in, go in there, man. I'm, I'm I can ready. already, I can already feel myself getting mad. Uh, I'm actually like my body heat's like rising. Uh, I feel like that you're gonna go into it because he's a Hufflepuff. Cedric Diggory is a Hufflepuff. Mm-hmm. Hufflepuffs, you know, Hufflepuffs get the shaft right. They get the shaft left and right. They are defined. They their defining quality is their loyalty, and their kindness and their their unwillingness to their their perseverance and their unwillingness to give up and their patience but but mo, you know moreover their loyalty when the when the last book of the of the mainline series comes around and and it's sort of like uh it's sort of like oh like we're you know we we have like like this big confrontation and the house is kind of need to decide what's going to happen the slytherins don't really stand up against voldemort at all for understandable reasons you know the gryffindors they all fight because they're brave idiots the ravenclaws are kind of like 50 50 the every single motherfucking solitary hufflepuff fights voldemort Mm -hmm. every single one of them and it isn't because they're brave and stupid like gryffindors it's it's because they're fucking loyal in no universe would cedric diggory become a death eater ever period it would not happen that is inexcusable that that's the first like nail in the coffin for me with this book cedric Mm -hmm. diggory is one of the few notable hufflepuffs that we can point to as like kind of like oh like this is cool because this is a major hufflepuff character that's a major character in the books Mm-hmm. And that that doesn't happen very often. The book follows a bunch of fucking Gryffindors, and like that that's why even going to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, right, with uh, my fiance back in Orlando, you go to these shops, and it's very primarily Gryffindor and Slytherin shit. Now, of course, those because those are like those are like the the main two, the popular uh, houses. Exactly, so. but you know, it's yeah. still you still you can get your Hufflepuff stuff. You know, I got my Hufflepuff shirt and stuff still, but. Very skewed towards the Gryffindor and the Slytherin side because that's what the book follows, right? Mm-hmm. So Cedric Diggory is a point of pride for Hufflepuffs because it's like we can point to him as a major character in these books. That is, you know, he. I think they even say this like he was the best of us. You know, it, it, it's so upsetting that this book concedes that because he was embarrassed by his performance in the Triwizard Tournament that he would become a Death Eater. Yeah. That's such a slap in the fucking face. The fucking tarnish that shit. That that's that's the first stupid thing, you know, like Yeah, I was saying it's definitely not the only stupid thing in this. It's not. So book. anyway, he goes he he try he saves Cedric Diggory's life, but at what cost? He goes back to the past and realizes that like, oh shit, I, I think it's 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 like all fucked up. It's like Voldemort Day and shit like that. That's I don't think it happens at that first time. I think it needs to happen like I think they go back like twice. It, they go back several times and they uh they I think I think eventually they actually uh didn't they actually fuck up Hermione and Ron's marriage like like Rose yes, ends up and I think I think Ron ends up with like I think for some reason I feel like he ends up with one of the uh He ends up with one Indian, of the uh the Patel chicks. twin. Yeah, one of the twins, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever the case may be, I think it's because, and this is another, again, the book is filled with these weird character inconsistencies. So I think the way they did that is the, is that like they, uh, they made it so that like Ron was not jealous of like Victor Crumb or whatever. Well, and what, the, okay. I think the, what, what there, I think I remember this. So, um, what ended up happening is one of the times they went back, they, uh, when they went back originally, they dressed up in the garbs of, I forget the name of the school, but Crumb's school. Right. Um, uh, Durmstrang. 
Yeah, Durmstrang. So when they went back, they actually talked to Hermione, and like Hermione ended up getting like really suspicious about all this, and even right. suspicious about Crum. And she didn't even. I don't think she even went to the the, the, the ball. ball or whatever. Right. With uh, Crum. Right, and so that so that in turn. Ron was never, like, jealous, so Ron never pursued Hermione, and so Ron and Hermione never ended up together, and so Rose was never born. Mm. And it's like, what? (laughs) Like, are you trying to concede that the only reason Ron and Hermione ended up together... No, it's not because of all these adventures they've gone on. It's not because of all these near-death situations they've had together. It's because, oh, he was fucking jealous of Victor Crumb. That's the only reason. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a little dumb. Like what? And uh, yeah, but so so the the but the main thing that happens once all this once all this sort of uh, the weed is separated from the chaff, the, what the really the crux is they go back into the the present or whatever, and everything's all fucked up. Hogwarts is all fucked up. I think I think Umbridge is now like the headmistress and stuff. Yep, and that's a, that is definitely a thing. And again, it's like Voldemort Day or whatever, and like Harry Potter's dead and shit like that. So and, by that, um, Albus doesn't exist. None of the, so Scorpius is actually sitting there alone in, right. in this. But the thing is, he's technically like a big deal. He's a big deal. Uh, he's sort of the new Harry Potter. Yes. You know, and he's he's like super popular, and he's actually kind of like, like this world is kind of better for him. You know. Mm-hmm. That's um, actually because like, and actually in the regular uh, the regular timeline, you know, he's kind of. He's one of the people that they, they might think is the cursed child of the title. Right. They thought that maybe he, the, the rumor was that he was like Voldemort's son or something like that. Yeah. Um, but you know, like like he, uh, but you know, it ends up ends up uh, being somebody else, which is we'll get into in a second. Um, they they do what they they end up going back in time again. Don't they? Don't they get her? They recruit Hermione into it, who is now like, like this. She's like in the woods, and she's like a fucking like. Yeah, weird. it ends up. Uh, so there ends up being a scene with um, Snape, uh, like a moment, a moment with Snape. I actually That's like right. the stuff with. Sna- I, I like the stuff with mind. Snape too. Yeah. I again, I like. I think Snape's one of my favorite characters. He so. is. He's he's a great character. Yeah. So so yeah, you know, you get a little uh, get a little moment with Snape, and you know, he gets a little. Uh, you know, he finds out everything that happened in the regular timeline. I actually kind of respect that part. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he takes them basically. I guess the I don't know what they're called. It's basically the resistance. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're like these freedom fighters, like hanging out in the fucking woods, like the forbidden woods or whatever, right? Yeah, it's like Hermione and all. Yeah. Yeah, <sighs> and they so they end up going back in time, and like and like oh, saving. Yeah, that, they always again they, with each of these timelines. There's these like moments with like uh, Ron and Hermione with the, when they're not together, right? And then he keeps on telling them, like, "Hey, you guys are married. You guys got like kids." They they end up the character of Delphi, right? It's revealed that she is actually Voldemort's daughter, right? And mm-hmm. she ends up sort of like uh, that. I think I think they they say that they're gonna destroy the Time Turner. And they, like, bring Delphi along with them, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because Delphi was the one that kind of planted the seed anyway about using the Time Turner. And that's when she sort of reveals that, like, uh, that she's Voldemort's daughter. And her whole thing is she wants to meet Voldemort. Like, she wants to go back in time. She she, she sort of just wants to, like, be with her dad. Which is kind of sad in a way. Again, this, this book is, like, a story of, like, of like fatherhood and and relationships yeah, with dads, like wanting you know, like wanting to be accepted by their respective father and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Which is you know, which is whatever it is. And so they end up, and this is stupid too. They end up going back in time to the moment that that Harry that Harry's parents are killed, right? And doesn't mm, Harry right. like transfigure himself or polyjuice potion or something like that to he look just, like I think Voldemort? He, honestly, I think he only transfigured himself. Yeah. So he, like, is pretending to be Voldemort, goes to his parents' house, like, pretending he's about to kill his own parents, and then, like... I don't even think they even go into the house. Like, they don't even go into the house. They don't. They sit there and have, like, a duel, like Harry and Delphi do. You know, she just... And I think he ends up, like, uh, paralyzing her, like, on the ground or whatever. Mm Mm-hmm. 
and like she just wants again she just wants to see her dad like so i sort of you know you know the the sort of like emotional crux of that i think is solid but um but then afterwards harry's sort of like all right well now i got it now now i'm about to watch voldemort actually kill my parents <laughs> mm-hmm. so that that's sort of traumatic or whatever but i did glaze over another stupid moment that i want to shout out before we before oh, we sort no, of no, I, I i'm pretty sure it was the same moment i'm thinking about yeah, before we sort of put a bow on all this, we, we've kind of gone point by point over some of the stupid time shit that happens in this book. We but, save the best for last. But I'll, I'll save the best for last. So this is so, so dumb. Uh, they, at, at one point, need to escape the Hogwarts Express, right? They need to, they need to sort of leave. And, and so they get onto the rooftop or the sort of top of the train, right? And who's waiting for them up there? The fucking trolley witch. The trolley witch is like, no child has ever left before it's reached its destination. <laughs> like, fucking, you know, like, she turns out to be this, like, Terminator robot with, like, these fucking, like, knife claws and throwing her pumpkin pasties as if they're grenades and shit like that. Hey, but you're forgetting oh. one thing. You don't want to know what she can do with chocolate frogs. <laughs> yeah oh my god it's like like what <laughs> dude like, that's that like that right there was my reaction i'm reading this i'm just like what the fuck is this i what? like i i was actually i wish you could have seen my face the first time i read that section of the book i was like what is this shit like what the <laughs> fuck is this what is happening right now are you fucking kidding me what is the point of this entire scene you know anyway uh, the, the book ends, as you alluded to earlier, uh, you know, Scorpio sort of like, you know, he's sort of found a little bit of confidence and stuff. And Harry says he's going to be a better dad to Albus and all this. And it ends on sort of a good note, right? Yeah. Um, and that's, and that's fine. Again, there are things that I like about this book. I, I think overall th- there is good in this book. Th- this book has its heart in the right place. But it just mm. fumbles so much with a lot of the actual character, and that's such an important part of Harry Potter that it leaves me feeling a little cold overall. And it, it kind and of pisses me off that, that some of this is canon. Yeah, just the fact know? that some of that shit is canon. The fact that, like, if you humiliated Cedric Digger, he's asking you to go Death Eater, that's considered that's canon. That's the most egregious sin of this entire thing mm. to me. But, I mm. again, I also hate that Hermione does not cast a powerful enough spell to fucking ward off some kids and that fucking... Delphi, the the fact that Delphi is like the the daughter of Bellatrix Lestrange and Voldemort, I like the idea that Voldemort would have a contingency plan of like, okay, if I do die, I have this daughter that's gonna want to come back and and save me, basically. I like that he would have that contingency plan, but the thought that Voldemort did that by like just fucking and impregnating Bellatrix Lestrange, like it's an image I don't want in my head. That's weird. That's weird as fuck. Like that's just. Why would he do that? Like, you know what I mean? Like, um, anyway, this book has a ton of like narrative sins in it, but it's there. There's, I can't completely hate it because there's good in it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's, there are things in this book that are good. Again, the, the melancholic tone of the book and not, you know, maybe for most students that aren't Harry Potter, maybe Hogwarts isn't that awesome of a place, you know? And, and I like that, and I like some of these character interactions, and I like the character of Albus, and I like the character of Scorpius, too, because he's living in his father's shadow as well, you know? Um, we didn't really touch on that too much, but, like, uh, there's a moment, I think in, I think in sort of the Scorpius' popular timeline, I think Malfoy... I actually, yeah, that's actually a moment I really enjoyed, um, the moment between him and his father. Yeah, I think Malfoy has technically harry's job in the real timeline Mm -hmm. uh but he's like torturing people and shit like that yeah um anyway there there's the the sort of the sort of uh message of the story is is about your relationship with fathers and i think that's that's effective and stuff like that and and I, i overall i like the cursed child but it just has some big 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 problems and i don't know if they ever make this into a movie, I'm like, oh god, <laughs> I don't want to see hey, some of this shit on the big all screen. They wanted, all, all I need, all I need, if they make a cursed child movie, 
is I want to see what you can do with them chocolate frogs. <laughs> now, <laughs> I'll say this, though. Uh, I really do love the uh, the redesigns of the house logos that they did for the Broadway or the fucking London West End show. Oh, um, they redesigned them? I didn't know that. They did the, some redesigns for the house logos, and they're fantastic. I love the redesigns. I really want to import... Uh, some of the Hufflepuff merch from that because I love the new logos, but um, that's that's neither here nor there. So before we wrap this up, just real quick, um, this book is in script format, and I don't think you really read script format things very often. How did you? I know like this that? is actually the first time I've ever actually read a script format. So I actually went into it with just looking at the page number. I'm like, oh, 300 pages. It's gonna take forever. Read that shit in like an hour. Yeah, script format is so like brisk and intentionally so because it's so dialogue heavy like yeah there is descriptive like flavor text but scripts are very much they're they're more so about dialogue like as long as it paints that basic picture in your head that's all script format cares about um and it's more so about the dialogue and and because of that it's a very very brisk read you can sit there and read i like i read harry potter and the cursed child in in one sitting um and just no problems at all um very very brisk interesting like it's 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 a it's a different way to read harry potter and i do one day when it comes on broadway i would love i know it's going to be super expensive and hard to get tickets for but i would love to go and actually see it and and just see it in person because i hear the production values are are amazing um but overall just before we wrap this up thoughts thought overall thoughts on the book to close it out no it's a it's a it's a story that has a good heart at the center, but just a lot of flaws, man. A lot yeah. of flaws. A lot of flaws. Can't believe some of those some of those flaws are canon. Uh, I don't have too much more to say about it. Um, before we wrap up this episode of Book Club, though, I said this on the main show, but just in case maybe you don't listen to the main show, maybe you only tune in for Book Club. Um, next month, we are not doing an episode of Book Club. We are taking uh, December off. Um we are going to have a bunch of episodes of the main show, kind of evergreen episodes, back ended for uh, for the kind of bottom half of December, and uh, we will be back at the end of January with another book club uh, episode. So no book club next month, just uh, just so you know, and uh, you'll have one in January. And we haven't quite decided. We kind of know what we're going to do, but we'll we'll announce later what that book is going to be um, when we come to it. So with that, Todd. Let's leave the wizarding world. Let's become muggles once again. <laughs> I'll see you guys. See you guys later. Thanks for listening. Get fucking dunked on. Bye. See ya.